Hi, my name is Michalia Strabler, and I'm the co-founder and co-executive director at Sembra Media, a nonprofit organization that uh, helps um, independent digital natives become more sustainable in Latin America, the US Hispanic market, and Spain. And today I'm going to share one of our latest research um, about sustainability and its highlights. So I'm going to share my screen now. So Inflection Point International is a study of digital media entrepreneurs in Latin America, Southeast Asia, and Africa. And this study is, um, has been possible thanks to the support of Luminate and CIMA. And for this research project to happen, we interviewed 2,200 uh, media organizations in 12 countries, and we conducted extensive uh, really thorough um, interviews about their media revenues, their threats, their risks, their challenges, their teams. And I'm gonna share a few highlights of what we discovered from this. First of all, their content is so relevant. More than half of these media have already won national or international journalism awards, and they are producing and, and doing data journalism, collaborative journalism, investigative journalism, and solution journalism, which is really, really engaging and community focused. And they are having impact. They reported that 76% of them have produced content that increased civic engagement, and 22% reported um, that had contributed to a government official resigning or, or being fired. Um, they're using obviously social media to distribute their content. And this is how we've seen it happens in, in each market. We've seen more and more the usage of messaging apps to distributing this content, but we also seen that their safety has, it has been always been a, a, a great risk and, and a problem, but it also has been um, incremented by the use of the social media where more than half of the media have been harassed. Um, we also seen that 40% have been have received uh, threats and 12% have been victims of a physical attack. As Katia Brasil from Amazonia Real uh, mentioned, when she was a reporter at Folia, she pitched stories about people from the Amazon that were never published because readers from Sao Paulo were re supposedly not interested in the facts about other regions of these countries. And people like uh, Katia are changing the way we cover and we share information of our countries, our communities. And also like Katia, 32% of the founders in this, um, in the total amount of media we interview, are women, and this is an unprecedented number of women leadership in our industry. When we when I talk about the business maturity of this media, we try to organize these um, groups of media in different tiers. Uh, to be able to um, understand how they got that um, business maturity. So here we have from tier zero to tier four, um, media that had no revenue at all, which was um, the, the, small, the smallest tier. And um, tier four, where they are getting, uh, they are producing more than 1 million um, revenue per year. And when we study this uh, business maturity, uh, we also pair these tiers to which is their median um, traffic, their median uh, years of publishing, and their team size. And we've seen different uh, uh, patterns in each, uh, in each group. We also seen that investing in talent was really key to success. And we've seen since 
we've done our last report that was only based in Latin America in 2017, we've seen an evolution of the median team of these uh, organizations. When we've studied this in 2017, we've seen that they have like a 10 people, total amount of people in their team and nine were journalists and one was a tech person. And now we've seen that there's a more diversity on the, these roles, maybe not enough, maybe not a super structural, uh, full management um, structure, but we've seen more people in management, in web design, fundraising and audience development and other creative roles that are key to this, um, the, this media development. And this is particularly uh, important because revenue was up to nine times higher with paid sales per uh, staff. So this is something we also observed in 2017. And now we keep uh, proving that when there's people um, getting um, compensated for uh, growing their business, they produce more and more uh, revenue for their media. And we also have seen this with um, when they have a tech team and a product leader. So they produce three times a higher re revenue than organizations that don't have this type of roles, even when they don't have a salesperson. So how do they earn revenue? Here we can see that grants top the list and ad revenue was second. And even though the pandemic can uh, have a factor in all these uh, numbers and this list in particular, this shows how um, the grants have evolved and helped this media to grow. We will see now a couple of recommendations for supporting this media. And I will start with um, recommendations recommendations for media uh, support organizations. Um, we've seen these uh, news outlets fighting to um, keep publishing when they pissed off uh, an official member of the government. And we've seen how damaging it, uh, economically that could be not only for the, their safety, obviously, but also for the economy of this media. And we see an opportunity to help them more and more with um, pro bono, legal, or another specialized services. And we keep seeing how much alliances help them grow when they are not ready or they don't have enough resources. So networking opportunities are key, not only to establish alliances that help them grow, but also to provide information to, uh, to exchange information that can provide some role models and some securities in an uncertain um, industry. And then we've seen that not everybody gets to know about fellowship. Marginalized communities of journalists often are left out of these opportunities. So making a bigger effort to include everybody and to broaden these communications for international fellowship for journalists are, um, we think are a good start. And these could influence a lot how these um, journalists come back to their communities and produce independent uh, content and media. And my final recommendations, these are for funders. As you've seen, there's a huge influence of grants in their revenue models. So we recommend to funders to um, provide grants with structural growth, uh, pushing media leaders to become more financially independent. Um, we really have seen the amount of growth that grants provide for this type of media. And we are so thankful that these grants exist. And we want to um, uh, just give this reminder that 
it's very important to um, not only focus on the journalistic work, but provide grants that can help the structure sustain itself. And the, the second point, it's a little related, not cutting um, fundings abruptly uh, is something we should recommend um, the funders to avoid. So um, not only provide uh, funding for growth, but also not cutting funding too abruptly, abruptly uh, because that could be really fatal and um, that could also throw away the work that it's been done with the media. So I appreciate you. I hope you find this um, presentation uh, uh, useful and I'll see you soon. <laughs>